Coming up on Hands on Mac, let's take a look at how to lock down your device to just one app. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Welcome back to Hands on Mac. I am Micah Sargent, and today we are taking a look at a feature that has been present in iPadOS and iOS for quite some time. It's called Guided Access, and it lets you lock down your phone or your tablet to just one app. And there are many reasons why you might want to do this. Uh, If you, for example, have a store and you have an app that's available for checking out, uh, that may be one reason why you'd want to have Guided Access turned on. It keeps it so that the device is locked to that one view, that one app, that one presentation, and can't access anything else. Another reason might be maybe you want to hand your phone off to, uh, you know, your child, or maybe you want to hand your phone off to a friend, but it's a distant friend who you maybe don't trust as much and who might go peeking around and other things. So you just want to keep that phone locked to that one view. That is what guided access is for. Also, I suppose if, you know, you have, uh, a judgy relative and you want to be able to show them something on your device, but you don't want them peeking around on your phone. This is another reason and another way that guided access to could come into play. So let's take a look at how we turn on, use, and uh, configure guided access. All right, so I have a phone here. And the first thing that we want to do is launch the settings app. From there, we're going to scroll down and we are going to head into accessibility. We'll choose accessibility. And in accessibility, you will see lots of different options. We want to scroll down until we get to guided access. You can see that's under general uh, at the very bottom. And guided access is currently turned off. The first thing that you do is you toggle it on. Uh, Once you've toggled it on, you need to set a passcode for guided access. That's what lets you join or not join guided access. So we will choose uh, the passcode settings option and we will choose set guided access passcode and then we will create a passcode. So I am setting up a passcode right now for guided access. And now I have the option to use face ID to end a guided access session. So again, the idea is that this is gonna be locked. There's no way to turn off guided access unless you type in the proper code or you face ID authenticate. I'm going to toggle on face ID authentication. It makes it a little bit easier. Uh, From there, you have the option of setting time limits. So you can say that after a guided access session has ended, then uh, make a a certain sound. So you could have, you could have, you know, a a bell or something like that that is triggered by the guided access session. It it starts a little bit before guided access ends. And then also a speak option that will speak aloud what is said, uh, what or rather how much time is left before guided access ends. And then there's an option to use an accessibility shortcut. Now, I like to have this toggled on because what this does is it adds it to a menu in your accessibility shortcuts. We've talked about that in previous episodes, uh, but triple clicking the side button on a newer phone or triple clicking the home button on an older phone will let you access your accessibility shortcuts, one of which can be guided access. And then the last section is how long it takes for your iPhone to automatically lock during a guided access session. So default means that it will lock based on how you have it set in your actual settings, but you can change that to say, you know what, when guided access is turned on, I don't ever want the screen to lock, for example. Now that we have guided access turned on, we have to actually access guided access. And let's say we want uh, this specifically locked to the Photos app as a really good example. So maybe I am in the Photos app and I have some different photos that have come through, and I want to make it so that I can pass this off to someone else and have them be able to view what's in my photos album without leaving this screen. I will triple click the side button. So I'm gonna turn that towards the camera. If you're watching, if you're listening, I am doing this. One, two, three. That's going to bring up at the bottom my accessibility shortcuts. I have one turn, or I have uh, two options here, reduced white point and guided access. I will tap on guided access. And then the guided access menu begins. I have some options here. So 
First and foremost, at the top, I can cancel if I don't want to use guided access or start if I wanted to go ahead and start guided access. And then there's the option to circle areas on the screen that you don't want enabled. What this does is it says, if a person <clears throat> uses this portion of the screen, so maybe for example, I don't want uh, the top portion of the screen to be able to be accessed, then I can draw a circle to encapsulate that portion of the screen. So what I've done is I've created a kind of rectangle at the top of the screen. And basically I'm saying, don't give them the ability to use that part of the screen. So albums is still available, uh, select is still available, and the three dots are still available, but I don't want them to be able to go into any of the other sections. I might also disable, for example, for you. So I can uh, select that portion of the screen as well and keep them from accessing for you. Now, after I've circled the parts of the screen I don't want them to be able to access, I will choose options down at the bottom, and I have some more options here of things to toggle on. I can disable or enable the side button, meaning that the side button uh, is able to lock the device. I can let the volume buttons be turned on or off. I'm going to let people use the volume buttons. Uh, whether motion is available, so if I turn my phone to the side or or turn it to portrait mode, if that will actually make changes on the screen, because it's the Photos app, I want that to be available. Whether someone can use software keyboards with this, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, whether someone can touch, yes, I do want them to be able to touch the screen. And last but not least is time limit. If I toggle on time limit, you are allowed to select how long that guided access time limit happens. So you could imagine, for example, that for the next 15 minutes, you want to have guided access turned on. By that point, you will have your phone back in your hands so you can turn it off. Uh, I'll tap done. I didn't turn on uh, time limit, but I did turn on volume buttons. And then I'm going to tap start in the top right corner. Now, when someone is using guided access, you can see that up at the top, um, if I try to tap anything up at the top of the screen, I am not able to access Control Center because I have disabled that portion of the screen. Uh, tapping on that portion of the screen at the top does nothing. And if I try to tap the For You section down here, I am not able to access that portion because I have disabled it. I can go ahead and access Library. I can access Albums and I can access Search, but I cannot access For You because that has been disabled. On the screen, it actually shows grayed out the parts of the screen that I selected that were unable to be accessed. Now, remember that I didn't set a timer for this. So how do I get out of guided access? Simply Ta uh, clicking the three buttons or the, the side button three times, one, two, three, will allow me to turn off guided access. But of course, it will need a passcode or if you have it set up and it's, uh, it's you know prompted for it, you can use Face ID. So I'll type in the code, guided access has ended. I can choose to resume that guided access or I can completely end it. I wanna end it and it shows on the screen guided access has ended. Um, let me show you the same thing in a different app, perhaps in Safari. I wanna give somebody the ability to browse on the phone. So one, two, three, clicking the side button, choosing guided access, and here we are going to let them use the dictionary lookup on this. We're going to let them not use software keyboards again. We will let them use the side button. We won't let them use the volume buttons. And of course they can touch. <clears throat> I will tap done. I'm going to give them access to everything on the screen except for the top. So I'm gonna draw kind of a rectangle at the top. Uh, let me do that again. I'm gonna draw a rectangle at the top and kind of hide that portion of the screen. And then we will choose start. And once again, uh, this person does not have access to that. But if I click that side button, it does let me lock the device and I can come back in afterward. I will triple click the side button, turn off guided access, type in my passcode and boom, it will end guided access. So once you've used guided access, you've set that up, it's very easy to do. At any time, if you decide you don't like guided access anymore, you simply launch the settings app, you choose accessibility, you scroll all the way down, you choose guided access, and you turn it off. But 
hey, why not keep it on in case there ever is a time that you want to use it? The great thing about guided access is that it's only activated when you toggle on guided access and you actually, when you tap guided access from the accessibility shortcut, or if it's the only option, triple clicking the side button will just automatically activate guided access. So again, turn it on, go to the app that you wanna lock down, triple click the side button, tap guided access, and work from there with the particular set of settings that you like. Folks, that is going to bring us to the end of this episode of Hands on Mac. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, it, for those of you who are listening to the audio version of the show in the public, remember you can get the video version of the show with an actual video tutorial of me doing that by going to twit.tv slash club to it. Thank you all for tuning in and we will catch you again next week for another episode of Hands on Mac. Bye-bye.